I fobbed into our apartment silently and heard moans. An icy wave of shock disrupted my warm elation at being let off work early because Miss Lou Bencher was delighted with my product description for the learning dildo we had been working on for 14 and a half months. I saw bubble wrap and an enormous cardboard box out of the corner of my eye as I crept towards the bedroom, my mind strangely detached and my shoulder blades tense. We hadn't screwed in a while, although we were still extremely tender with one another. EastEnders and popcorn, selfies at sights, sleeping side by side. The household was suspended on the tenuous acknowledgement that we both watched porn. I wondered what he was into. Our orgasms had seemed to get quieter and quieter as we each drifted into our own private erotic limbos. I had probably just disrupted his. Then I heard the soft creaking of the bed and my boyfriend's quivering voice. Fuck, that feels amazing, don't stop. I pushed back against the wall and began to swallow my sobs, which made me, which made me spasm as the creaking continued. Two sets of little mewed exhalations. I focused on the bubble wrap on the scratched wooden linoleum through teary eyes while I thought about what to do next. Made a move for the door, but my hand floated limply in the air. I returned to the same position. Deep breath. I had to see, even though I couldn't bear to. I put my black nail polished hand on the door to our bedroom on which hung an intersection of love, our surnames on street signs on the corner we met on in Portobello. There, that's it. Touch me, in a voice that was familiar, but computerised. I closed my eyes and pushed the door open, shaking with some kind of energy. The back of my favourite bra, a set of knickers I didn't recognise. I saw my boyfriend's crumpled pleasure face, his eyes clenched shut. When they opened slightly, he caught mine and tensed into awareness. And what the fuck is this? You put her in my favourite fucking bra? I saw the tip of the girl's nose from behind long blonde hair swept in front of her left shoulder as she began to turn around. Shit, stop, stop, stop. Whoever it was stopped bouncing as if she were automatic, settling on the base of my boyfriend's dick. Normal mode, he started out. Hello, I said to me, robotized. I stared at myself. I had only seen that face in mirrors or photographs. I thought it was some kind of a perverted reflection, some impossible feat of smoke and mirrors. But I hadn't put red lipstick on today. What? A breathed inflection. Hi, honey, I... I... It was me sitting on him. Her, it's... My hands were on his chest as its heterochromic blue and green eyes stared at me. My eyes. The same dark hollow of a vaccination mark on her right arm. It's... It's me, I said, unsure of whether it was a statement or a question. Yeah, he said, his eyes imploring me to choose a course of action that he could adapt to. How? There's a company. They're, they're called Humane. No, I mean, how the fuck does it exist? Have they built a model of me? It dawned. Oh, the videos weren't for your art project. It was still on my boyfriend, even though he had gone soft. It's nice to meet you. How are you today? The robotic modulated voice asked in the awkward silence. I was disarmed by its familiarity. I'm, I'm, how are you? Great, it's good to be used for the first time. It unstraddled him, smiled mechanically, and walked over to me with the same rolling shouldered walk I used when I was wearing a ball gown or lingerie. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is K Kirsty. She glitched on the last word and extended a hand towards me. Her nails were painted black. So's mine, I said, as my head pounded with incomprehension. I looked over at my boyfriend. His hands now pinched the centre of his lips. Kirsty didn't move as I shakily began to take off my shift and top and then my black leggings. Leaving my clothes in a pile on the floor, I untied my hair and threw it in front of my left shoulder. I sat down at my makeup desk and saw Kirsty staring blankly down the corridor. Taxidermy me. I never realised I had a small patch of discoloured skin just above my neck line. Are you okay? My boyfriend asked as I put on red lipstick. 
I didn't say a word as I crossed back to Kirsty, took her hand and led her over to the full-length mirror in the corner of the room. My eyes looked at hers in the reflection. They stared straight ahead. I scanned her up and down. The only thing that didn't match was our underwear. I looked into its glassy eyes, which blinked a little too slowly, her left eyelid catching briefly on her eyeball. She licked her lips sluggishly. It didn't look like he was cheating. I put my hands on her firm hips and felt her strange breathing, slow for someone who had just been in bed with my boyfriend. Her breath smelt like silicone and him. I felt a strange urge to kiss her. Would she kiss back symmetrically? Would her lips be hard? Would her spit feel like gel? Have you finished? I asked him. No, he said in the most level voice he could. Finish up with me and then we'll talk. I'll be in the other room. I heard sex mode from behind me. I walked next door and pulled out the prototype dildo we had been working on from my handbag. Creaks from the bedroom. Turn on, I said to the dildo and went into the sitting room. Two years and 51 days later, we consummated our marriage on a honeymoon after an intimate wedding. Our respective sex robots needed to go through sex... Uh, our respective sex robots needed to go through special baggage at the airport. I had gotten one of him.